In this lesson, we're going to look at integrating rational expressions using a method called partial fraction decomposition. Uh, and this involves uh, breaking up a rational expression into multiple rational expressions by factoring the denominator. And so uh, this is a, a good method for um, a specific type of integrand, right, where we've got rational expressions and we can't solve them by another method like substitution, say. So here's an integral. Uh, we've got the integral of 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6, and we want to rewrite this so that we can integrate. So first off, just notice that as we look at this integral, we can't apply uh, something like u substitution, right? If we, we would want to make the u the denominator, x squared minus 5x plus 6, but the derivative of that is 2x minus 5, and we don't have a factor of x in the numerator, and so this isn't a really good candidate for substitution. So we need some other method, right? And what we want to do here is recognize that we might be able to break down this expression uh, into easier expressions um, based on factors in the denominator. So let's, let's look at that denominator and notice uh, that it factors, right? So we've got x squared <clears throat> minus 5x plus 6, and we can factor that to x minus 2 times x minus 3, okay? And because of that, we are able to take the expression in the integrand and rewrite it in terms of those two factors. And that is to say, there is some number a over x minus 2 plus another number b over x minus 3 that will produce this. And uh, stop and convince yourself of that for a second because all we have to do is realize that combining these fractions involves multiplying each one by the other one's denominator, right? So this first fraction, a over x minus 2, I would multiply top and bottom by x minus 3. And the second fraction, I would multiply top and bottom by x minus 2. And uh, if you did that and combined, um, we could produce uh, the one that we need on top, right? And uh, we would have therefore written this single rational expression as a pair of rational expressions that are simple. So how do we go about doing that? Well, let's clear the fractions. And so I'm going to multiply both sides um, by x minus 2 and x minus 3, okay? On the left, I'm going to multiply that in the form of x squared minus 5x plus 6, right? Because that's what this product is. And if I do that, I'll get a 1, right? So that will cancel. But on this side, when I multiply by both x minus 2 and x minus 3, the x minus 2 cancels for the a, and I'm just left with a times x minus 3. And the second fraction, the x minus 3 will cancel, and I'm just left with b times x minus 2. So pause this and make sure you're, you're understanding what's going on so far, right? I just multiplied both sides by basically this expression, okay? This expression on this side and this product on this side. But now we can solve this. We've basically got a system embedded inside this expression. And what I mean by that is um, we've got ax plus bx. Well, there are no x's on this side. So ax plus bx equals 0x, which means a plus b is 0. Simultaneously, we have negative 3a plus negative 2b must be 1, right? And so even though this looks like one equation, there are actually two equations embedded, one for the x term and one for the constant term. Um, and so we can figure out a and b using that system. Uh, I'll write that over here because there's also another way we can do this, right? So we can say ax plus bx equals 0x because there's no x, which means a plus b is 0. But there is a constant of 1, and so a times negative 3 plus b times negative 2 must be equal to 1, right? So we could solve this system and get a and b, but we could also simply plug in uh, convenient values for x to, to solve, right? And what I mean by that is, if we let x be 3, then this drops out to 0, right? And 3 minus 2 is 1, so 1b would have to be 1, right? Uh, and so 
B must be 1, right? So I'm saying let x equal 3. That would imply that 1 equals B. Likewise, we can eliminate the B uh, term here by letting x equal 2. That would imply 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative A equals 1, which means that A is negative 1. Okay, so we have A equals negative 1, B equals 1. And we can ch double check that in the system if we want to, right? 1 plus negative 1 is 0, yes. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3, minus 2 times 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. Yes, that solves the system. And so what this means for us is that we can rewrite this integral now as negative 1 over x minus 2 plus 1 over x minus 3 because this is an equivalent representation of the original integrand. And now because this is a sum of simpler rational expressions, we can integrate those individually uh, based on our integration rules for sums. And uh, hopefully you remember how to integrate uh, 1 over a linear factor here. Um, we're going to get negative natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2. Plus natural log of x minus 3 plus c. And that's partial fraction decomposition. So we're decomposing this integrand um, to produce easier rational expressions that we can then integrate. Partial fraction decomposition uh, works at least to a degree for all rational expressions uh, because of what we know about polynomials, right? And what I mean by that is we know that every real polynomial can be factored into the combination of linear and or irreducible quadratic factors. And so uh, the idea is no matter what our rational expression, we can always factor that denominator down into linear and quadratics. And so if we are able to integrate rational expressions whose denominators are just single factors of um, linear, uh, linear factors or quadratic factors, then um, we can integrate that entire expression regardless of the original degree of the denominator. And so that's why this is a valuable uh, method for integration for this specific um, type of problem. Now let's look at how we can go about doing that decomposition generally. So here are the steps we want to do. Um, first, if the rational expression is improper, uh, and that is to say if the numerator of the rational expression is of equal degree or greater degree than the denominator, then we want to do a division first, right? Either a, like a long division to um, pull out that uh, constant uh, uh, term at first and have uh, a numerator that is of lesser degree than the denominator uh, before we attempt to do the decomposition. Second thing we want to do is then factor the denominator using the methods we know how to do. And then third, we're going to end up after that factoring with combinations of linear and, and or quadratics, right? And some of those linear factors and quadratic factors might have uh, a multiplicity to them, right? And so for each linear factor of the form px plus q, maybe to the mth, right? Maybe to a power, we want to include in the sum a term for each power up to m, right? So maybe that linear factor only occurs once, like in the example we did to start, right? There were two linear factors each occurring once, x minus 2 and x minus 3. Well, if that's the case, then you just have a constant over that linear factor, right? But if that linear factor is squared, let's say, you would have a constant over that linear factor plus a constant over the square of that linear factor. And if that linear factor were cubed, then you would have three terms in the, in the uh, decomposition. Uh, we're going to talk about why that is uh, in the next slide, but um, just realize for now, right, as many 
or whatever the power on your linear factor is, is how many terms you're going to have in the decomposition for that portion of the rational expression. Likewise, for each quadratic factor of the form ax squared plus bx plus c to the m, we're going to have a decomposition of the form bx plus c over that quadratic factor. Think about why that is. It's because of the remainder, right, when you do a division. Um, if you have a linear factor, you're going to have a constant remainder when you do a division. If you have a quadratic factor, you're going to have a linear remainder um, at most, right? And so that decomposition can produce at most um, a linear numerator uh, for a quadratic denominator, right? And similarly to the uh, linear factors, if you have multiplicity, then we're going to have um, multiple terms in that decomposition, one for each power up to and including the, the original mth power, okay? Um, so these can get, you know, these dumb decompositions can get pretty pretty big, uh, have a lot of terms if, if the power on these factors is high, right? And typically we won't, we won't uh, have multiplicity greater than two in anything that we look at, but um, just be aware of that's the formula, that's the, the form that this takes, okay? Now, uh, why is it the case that when you do a decomposition of, let's say, a px plus q squared, right, why does that produce two terms a constant over the, the linear factor to the first plus another constant over the linear factor squared, right? I, I often get the question, well, why isn't, you know, if I have the square of a linear factor, that's just like a quadratic. Why don't you just have a single fraction that's a decomposition that looks like this one, um, a bx plus c over the quadratic, right? And it's true that, that you could have this. So you could decompose uh, that portion of the rational expression as a single fraction bx plus c over the linear factor squared, um, but we can do better. And it's easier to integrate a constant over a linear factor potentially than it is um, this over a quadratic, and so we can break it down further. Now, um, People are confused. It's like, well, how do you know that it's going to be a constant over the linear factor and another constant over the linear factor squared? Or, or why do you need both terms um, when you have the squared one here? Uh, and so let's look at that a little bit more in depth so that we have a good picture of, of why that is. So what we want to do is look at a general case of uh, an expression like bx plus c over a squared linear factor. Again, we're just going to take like sort of the simplest case. We'll say that x minus a squared, okay? And show that this is, or can be written as like a, an a1 over x minus a plus an a2 over x minus a quantity squared, okay? So this is our goal see why that is. So what I want you to notice first is um, we can factor out, if you will, the b out of this top expression. And if we do that, right, just draw a little arrow here, we're going to get um, b times the quantity x plus c over b, right, over x minus a squared. Okay. Um, but notice also I could make this, I want to produce the x minus a in here. So I can rewrite x plus c over b as x minus a. So I'm going to subtract an a and just add it back. And now I'm just going to kind of group, group these things in that way. And this, of course, is still over x minus a quantity squared. And while I'm at it, I'll group this as well. But what I see now is that by distributing b to each of these two groupings, I can create two separate fractions, right? And so this, um, this is going to give us, you know, as a distribution, b times the quantity x minus a 
plus b times the quantity c over b plus a. Again, two terms over this denominator. And we can sort of start to see how uh, we're progressing towards this expression, right? Because now I'm going to break these two terms up. b times x minus a over x minus a squared is going to allow me to cancel one of the factors of x minus a. And so this is going to allow me to write b over x minus a plus, and then if I distribute the b here, I'm going to get um, b times c over b is just c plus uh, b times little a all over x minus a squared because the linear factor doesn't cancel for this term. And since c, b, and little a are all constants, I, I've produced the form up here where I've got a constant over x minus a and another constant over x minus a squared. And so this is why we're able to uh, break down uh, this, uh, this sort of expression that has multiplicity of linear factors into um, several terms, each that has a constant numerator. And that's what's important as far as our integration is concerned. It's going to make things easier for us because um, terms like this are always integrated using a natural log, right? And we can find other patterns for, for the other terms as well. And so that, that's, how we, that's how we handle that. And this generalizes, of course, to higher powers, uh, where it's not just two, but we could generalize that and, and see where that uh, is produced for higher powers as well. Also generalizes to the quadratic ones. You could, you could do the same kind of um, demonstration there to show that that works as well for the quadratics. So that's just a little bit of background. Uh, people often ask, you know, why does this decompose that way? And it's because... Uh, it's because of this, because we can rewrite it in that way. So let's look at some examples now, a couple examples, and, and uh, work through them and see how we can uh, use this in practice. Okay, so I look at this. I've got uh, an expression here, 5x squared plus 20x plus 6 over a cubic. And first I want to check, is this improper? No, uh, the denominator has a, has a cube, and the numerator is of degree 2, so we're not improper. We can just continue and start with the uh, process of partial fraction decomposition. So I want to factor that denominator, right? And so just let's do that. x cubed plus 2x squared plus x is, well, I see I can pull out an x, and that leaves you with x squared plus 2x plus 1. And I recognize that as a square, so that's x times x plus 1 squared. So what I have are two linear factors, one of which has multiplicity 2. Okay, And my expression then you know, is going to be 5x squared plus 20x plus 6 over x times x plus 1 squared. And that breaks down into uh, an a over x plus, we'll just say, a b over x plus 1. Because this has multiplicity 2, we also have a c over the quantity x plus 1 squared. Okay. Now my advice to you at this point is to clear the fractions. Right. We're going to multiply by the denominator. Right. Um, x times x plus 1 squared, or x cubed plus 2x squared plus x, if you prefer, right? But we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator, and we're going to get from that the original numerator, 5x squared plus 20x plus 6, equals, and now just cancel the, the terms, or excuse me, cancel the factors that um, appear in the denominator of each individual term here. So the x is going to cancel here, and so this is going to be a times x plus 1 quantity squared plus b times uh, x times x plus 1 plus c times x. Okay, and really this equality, you know, really isn't, uh, these are identically equal, right? 
So uh, we're looking for a, b, and c's that make these this identically equal, not just equal for some x, right? And I should have been uh, should have mentioned that earlier, right? Um, this expression, the, our original expression, is the same as the expression on the right for all x's, and so we have an identi identically equal situation here, um, uh, not simply an equality that we're solving, right? And that is important because it allows us to very easily solve for some of these things, right? So for instance, um, by choosing x wisely, we can uh, eliminate um, one or more of the a, b's, and c's and solve for the remaining one. So for instance here, right, I can choose because b, x, and c, x both show up here, if I choose x to be 0, those terms will drop out, and 0 plus 1 is 1, and 1 squared is 1, so I'm going to get a on this side, right? And if I plug in zeros on this side, um, I get 6, right? So if I let x equal 0, then I get uh, that a is 6. Great. Now I can uh, sort of plug that in and keep going, right? Likewise, uh, if I let x equal, I look at the factors here, negative 1, right? x plus 1, I let x equal negative 1, then a and b drop out, and that gives me uh, a negative c, right? So let's let's look at that. So that's negative c, and on this side we're going to get uh, negative one squared is one, so that's five. Five minus twenty is negative fifteen. Uh, negative fifteen plus six is negative nine. So negative c is negative nine. That means c equals nine, right? And uh, now I can I can solve for b as well. Um, let's let's plug the a and c in just so that we have um, that to work with. Uh, this is going to be six times x plus one squared plus I still don't know b yet. B x times x plus one plus nine x. Okay, um, solving for b, I can either you know I can either multiply all this out and then. Uh, find the b that causes the coefficients to match, or I can just pick another value for x at this point and and solve and see which one, you know, what b makes that work. So, like for instance, let's just let x equal two. Okay. Well, on the the left hand side, uh, I'm going to get two squared is four. Um, tw I get twenty. Twenty plus uh, forty is sixty. So I'm going to get sixty six on this side. And on this side, I'm going to get uh, 2 plus 1 is, is 3, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 6 is 54, plus um, 2 times, you know, 2 plus 1 is 3, times 2 is 6, so this is 6b, plus 18, and then I can just solve this for b. Uh, what do we get here? We get 6b equals, uh, what's that, 64, 72, uh, subtract 72, we get negative 6, and that gives us that b equals negative 1, right? So I've now written this here as, um, what did we say, 6 over x plus negative 1 over x plus 1 plus 9 over x plus 1 squared, right? And uh, we can now integrate this expression instead of the original expression. So let's let's go ahead and do that uh, on the next page here. So let's remember 6, negative 1, and 9. 